Photo illustration Bolterin Call Me By Your Name Army Hammer plays the all-American object of desire, but would the movie have worked as well if Shia LaBeouf had taken his role? Instead, that was the intent of original director James Ivory, who cast LaBeouf as Oliver, the grad student who romances a besotted young man in the acclaimed new film. When Luca Guadagnino took over the production, he remembered meeting with Hammer years earlier and thought the actor would be a better fit, but it's fascinating to imagine what might have been if the scruffy, unpredictable LaBeouf were cast as clean-cut Oliver instead. That's just one of the ways that this year in film almost turned out very differently. Timothée A. Chalamet, the actor who stars opposite Hammer in Call Me By Your Name, almost had his breakout moment in another one of 2017's buzziest films he was on the shortlist to play Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, vying with actors like Nat Wolf and Asa Butterfield to don the supersuit for a rebooted trilogy of films that began with the summer hit Spider-Man Homecoming and eventually starred Tom Holland as the famous web-slinger. Another comic book movie with a might have been casting is Wonder Woman, which tried to lure Nicole Kidman to play the titular superheroine's mother but lost her to a big little lies scheduling conflict. Connie Nielsen eventually took that part, while Kidman segued to another supermom in the same cinematic universe as the mother to Jason Momoa in Aquaman, due out next year. And then there's Matthew McConaughey, who says he turned down a part in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2. Director James Gunn has always claimed that Kurt Russell was the first choice to play Chris Pratt's father in that film, but could he have considered McConaughey to play Marvel character Adam Warlock, who had appeared in early iterations of Gunn's sequel story? Instead, of heading into space for that surefire success McConaughey starred as the villain in this summer's misbegotten Stephen King adaptation The Dark Tower, which director Ron Howard once tried to mount with Javier Bardem as the gunslinging protagonist and Russell Crowe as his adversary. Once Howard let the project go, Idris Elba was cast as the gunslinger, and that's not the only long germinating project Elba came on to late in the Game the survival romance The Mountain Between Us, where Elba stars opposite Kate Winslet, was almost shot years earlier, with Charlie Hunnam and Rosamund Pike. Hunnam had hoped to star opposite his Pacific Rim colleague Elba in Guy Ritchie's wannabe franchise starter King Arthur Legend of the Sword, but Jaiman Hansu ended up with that supporting role. One role Elba wanted and didn't get, though, was Vane Gaston in the live-action version of Beauty and the Beast he auditioned for the role and even sang, but director Bill Condon cast Luke Evans instead. Hunnam delivered one of his best performances this year in James Gray's adventure drama The Lost City of Zed, but Gray had pursued Brad Pitt for a year to take that lead role, then planned to make the movie with Benedict Cumberbatch until he dropped out two weeks before production because of his wife's pregnancy. Other movies that changed their casts over development delays included it, where original director Kerry Fukunaga wanted to cast Will Poulter as the terrifying clown. Penny Wise, and The Glass Castle, which had Jennifer Lawrence attached years ago when she fell out of that fact-based drama, Brie Larson came on board. And, of course, there's our dear departed friend Tulip Fever, a truly cursed production that was nearly shot in 2004 with Jude Law and Kira Knightley starring. The movie was made almost a decade later with Dane DeHaan and Alicia Vikander, though even after it was finished filming, the road to release wasn't easy. You'll soon be seeing John Boyga in Star Wars The Last Jedi, but it's rumored that he and Logan Lerman both hotly pursued the title role in Baby Driver that ultimately went to Ansel Elgort. Another hot Star Wars-related rumor for a while there, it looked like Jane the Virgin star Gina Rodriguez was in contention alongside Tatiana Maslany and Olivia Cook for a significant new role, likely the part won by Kelly Marie Tran. 
We'll soon see how Tran fares in the film, just as viewers of this month's downsizing can imagine how the film would have been different with the originally cast Reese Witherspoon as Matt Damon's wife though it would have been a reunion with her election director Alexander Payne, Kristen Wiig ultimately ended up with that role, and, in perhaps the more notorious example of a recent recasting, compare late Philin Christopher Plummer to the work originally done by a makeup aided Kevin Spacey as J. Paul Getty in Ridley Scott's All the Money in the World. Shia LaBeouf in Call Me by Your Name and other near castings.